Wait, did you see the interview that Tyrese just did with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay? There's some things that we have to talk about from a licensed therapist perspective, starting right now. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hey, welcome. But if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and spinning the block on me. Now, this interview with Tyrese and Shannon Sharp was juicy. There were so many things that were talked about and wasn't talked about that I wanted to break down from a licensed therapist perspective with you guys. Per usual, there will be spoiler alerts in this video. So if you have not watched the full interview, go on over to Shannon Sharp's YouTube channel, watch it. It's about two hours and maybe 30 minutes long-ish. And then come back because I need to know in the comment section, what did you guys think about Tyrese? What did you think about the interview? What did you think about the whole thing? Put it in the comments so we could chat because you know I love chatting with y'all about stuff like this. The first thing that I noticed was the brotherhood that Tyrese and Shannon Sharp had. I don't believe that they knew each other prior to this because it felt like this was a new friendship or a new relationship. But the kiki in that they did, the jokey jokes that they did, Tyrese was making fun of Shannon Sharp's nose. He was making fun of him being ashy. He literally made him put on some oil and some lotion and say, nah, bro, get them elbows. You looking kind of crusty. You can't be a dark skinned black man looking dusty and crusty out here and ashy. And so that was just so interesting to watch because it felt like both of them needed that. It felt like Tyrese needed to hang out with the homie and laugh and kiki and kind of shoot the breeze a little bit. It was something that, it was like his soul needed that, if I'm not mistaken. Normally when you're joking with somebody that you don't know, it may or may not land appropriately. So the fact that Shannon Sharp was laughing with him and he didn't take offense to that, it was really cool to watch. So I love seeing these two dark skinned black men kiki and have a little joy. Not black boy joy, because they grown men, but it's like black men joy. I love watching that. The second thing that I want to talk to you guys about is Tyrese starting from the bottom. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Hey, yay, hey, started, but okay, okay, I'm gonna act right in this video, but being that Tyrese was from Watts, I was like, oh, that's right around the corner from where I grew up. If you're not familiar with the Los Angeles, California area, it's like Compton, Long Beach, Inglewood, Watts, we all right there. So Compton, where I grew up, is the neighboring city to Watts. And so all of the things that he was talking about and mentioning and, you know, going to school and walking past all of these gangs and not trying to sell drugs and not trying to get killed at a young age, is real. He wasn't lying about any of the things that he mentioned. It was really that kind of life. He mentioned Lock High School, mentioned all of the streets. I was like, oh, I know exactly where you used to live. I knew exactly where you grew up. But it's always beautiful to see stories where people had humble beginnings. They didn't grow up with like a silver spoon in their mouth or have a history of somebody who can help them. It was like he really got it out of the mud. He really started from the bottom. He really was able to make something of himself. And even just the story that he shared about how he got the Coca-Cola commercial and how he was like three, four hours late because he had to catch the bus. He basically had to beg the lady to allow him to audition. And when he did, he killed it. He smashed it just to think that that moment changed the trajectory of his life. I know he wasn't thinking, he mentioned, he said, look, I was just trying to have more than $100 in my pocket, and I was also trying to get this one girl phone number. That's all I wanted. He didn't say he wanted to be this millionaire or this superstar or this you know, best-selling whatever. He was just like, those were my aspirations when I was younger, to have more than $100, and to get a girl's number. He clearly has way more than that. He is in all of the films, in all of the things. And so to even think that someone like him who grew up in a very poverty, low, low economic status has all of the things that he's had, has all of the things that he will continue to have is dope. The third thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is mommy and daddy issues. Y'all know we couldn't have a conversation, especially with all of the things that Tyree shared about his mom struggling with addiction, specifically alcohol, with his dad not being present a huge chunk of the time. And his mom used to make him and his siblings pretend like they were physically disabled just so they can get benefits. You know, all of these things happen and it impacted him. 
If anybody say that it didn't, you know you lying. And he know that it impacted him too. Because when you have these wounds, when you have some unresolved issues, a lot of trauma growing up, especially with those who are supposed to be your primary caregivers, it impacts every single thing else about your life. It impacts how you show up in school. It impacts how you have romantic relationships growing up. All of these things matter. And we can see how that played out even in Tyrese's life. He talked about how he didn't have or didn't see uh, outside of Red Run a role model of what a healthy, thriving relationship or marriage looks like or look like. He talked about all of these different things and how nobody really teaches you what this is supposed to look like because all you see is drama and trauma and broken homes and all of these things. And you haven't seen a lens of what something is supposed to look like from a healthy stance. And that also means it impacted how he parents his children. Right? And that leads me to the fourth thing, which is generational patterns and cycles. We've seen very clearly that Tyrese does not drink alcohol, y'all. When Shannon Sharp was like, hey, yo, we're going to take it. He was like, no, 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 I got this apple juice <laughs> right here. We can clink, clink a glass, but it, I don't drink, you know? And so we know that that stemmed from how he saw his mom and what he saw growing up from her struggling with alcohol. He was like, absolutely not. Will I allow this to be something that is going to be passed down to me and passed down to my children? In this aspect, he was a generational curse breaker, a generational cycle breaker, because he was saying the buck stops with me and it ain't going no further. But I really want him to have that same energy that he had about not drinking alcohol and not having substances alter his perspective or his livelihood. I want him to have that energy for other areas of his life too. I mean, he has been very open and has been very much in the forefront about his marriage and relationship issues and woes have been all over social media. And y'all be making fun of him because, you know, Tyree seems to be very in touch with his emotions. I'll say it that way. Bruh is not afraid to cry. He's not afraid to express himself. And I appreciate that. Once again, to see a black male be in touch with his emotions, even if y'all feel like he's overdoing it, is beautiful because that just shows that he's not suppressing things, he's letting things out, and he's trying his best to be as open and as honest as possible, especially when you're in the limelight and you're a celebrity. Everything that you do is under a little microscope, right? So when y'all be making fun of him, saying he's too emotional, he a crybaby, stop posting this on your Instagram, get back to the music, bruh. What do you want him to do? It's like if he wasn't saying anything and responding to y'all, y'all would have a problem about it. But then now that he is talking up and sharing bits and pieces of his life, y'all got a problem about that too. So I have talked to you guys a million and one times about how this whole thing is like a double standard. You know, it's a, it's a hit and miss. People are never going to be satisfied with what you do. So you have to live your life and your life's journey for yourself. So if you want to talk about his relationship, his past, his marriage, his kids, his career, whatever, let him. It seemed like the way that he is allowing himself to have a positive outlet about this is through his music. When he started singing, I dang near melted in my bed. Okay, I was watching it. <laughs> I was watching on my TV in my room and I said, oh, I miss his voice. Like, I can't remember the last time that I heard him really sing, sing. So to know that he has an album out there, I think he said it's at Tyrese.tv. He didn't pay me to promote it or anything like that. But if you're interested in his album, go cop that. He said, I'm independent. He said, I need, I need all the support I can get on this. But he said he put his heart and his soul into this album. And I think that that is a catharsis. It is a relief for him to do something positive and get everything that has been pinned up on the inside of you out and do it in a positive way is key because he could turn to alcohol. He could turn to fighting. He could turn to all of these abusive and unhealthy things, but he's choosing to redirect that in a more positive light. And we can't be mad at that. And the fifth thing, the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is he was so real about how we're not real about our relationships and marriages. <laughs> I hope you caught what I'm trying to say. He talked about how everyone on social media is always like, my relationship is perfect and I have 2.5 kids and a white picket fence and a little dog and we're, we're just living our best life over here. But no one talks about the difficulties. No one is honest about the pitfalls, the downfalls, the things that happen behind the scene. And we're not saying 
tell everybody your business, but it gives this illusion and this perception outwardly that people's relationships and their marriages are perfect. So when things happen and they crumble and they fall apart, we are like, wait, 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 what happened? We thought y'all were living y'all best life. And from a licensed therapist perspective, I get what he was saying. I wish there were more people who were honest about the truth of what marriage is. Also y'all parents too. I don't think, especially women, y'all are not always honest about what the pregnancy and the delivery and postpartum is like. No one is really that raw and honest. And I think that if we allowed ourselves to do that about being a parent, about being a spouse and saying, hey, this is hard, this was difficult. Um, these were the challenges that we had it will allow other people not to glamorize it, right? Like it will allow other people to be like, okay, this is this is something that I might go through. This is how I might handle it. It'll give people some tools instead of just thinking everything is peachy keen when it ain't. So how you handle your marriage online and offline is so important. People are watching you whether you know it or not. The sixth thing that we have to talk about is what Tyrese had on. <laughs> I know I, I said I wasn't going to be petty in this and I'm all here for him wearing traditional Middle Eastern clothing. Like I follow him on Instagram. So there's been times where he was in Dubai and he would, you know, wear stuff like he had on in this interview and people were dragging him like you got on a dress, you got on a skirt, men don't wear that. And it's just like, y'all don't understand culture. Like you're not going to rock out and wear some jeans with holes in them, you know, when you end up like, let's be for real. But why he wore this on this interview, when I initially turned on, I said, why he got that on? <laughs> and then I said, and why he got that beanie on? Like, why do you have that red beanie on? And like, maybe towards the end of this interview, he mentioned that his luggage got lost. That's really all he had. He said he was a little rank because he left the house um, without putting on deodorant. And he also talked about how he had the red beanie on because these little cufflings or whatever you want to call them was red. I still think that the beanie was a little too casual for what he got on, but hey, if it works for him, if, he, if you like it, we love it. But let's be for real in regards to that. Tyrese talked his behind off his whole entire episode. Of course, it's an interview, so we want to hear about him and his life, but I felt like there weren't as many moments where Shannon Sharp got a chance to interject and intersect to really guide the conversation. That's one of the things that I struggle with sometimes with watching Shannon, depending on who he's interviewing. Sometimes he has too many questions. It's just like, pull back and let the interviewee, you know, speak. And then there's other times where he doesn't interject enough. And I think in this episode, he could have had more questions. He could have real Tyrese in. That is what being a really great host entails. While he didn't get a chance to do that, he probably had like 1.78 questions for Tyrese and Tyrese just talked the whole time, <laughs> okay? Tyrese interviewed himself during this interview. Let's just say it that way. I was cracking up at the moments where Tyrese blatantly said, edit this out. We gonna do it like this. Please add this in post-production and editing. And baby, they ain't done none of it, okay? Tyrese said, put the little bouncing balls on the words that I say and post edit. That didn't happen. Tyrese said, edit this part out and I'm gonna pretend like I'm handing you my album, my vinyl album with the red and everything. They kept that in there, right? And I'm just like, who is in, po in post-production? Who's not doing their job? And while I thought that was funny, I was just like, well, it is what it is. They did not want to delete one drop of a thing from this interview and I can't be mad at that. The last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about before I give my final thoughts is Tyrese's faith. I can appreciate someone who is team Jesus. Y'all know I'm team Jesus. And whether you rock with that or not, I love when people are bold about whatever they believe in. Sometimes on these platforms, people are always like, yeah, God, and you know God, but it's like, what God you talking about? Because there's tons of them out there. You talking about big G or little G? <laughs> and for the fact that he was team Jesus and saying, Lord, please use me. Thank you, Jesus. You know, all of those things in this interview. I appreciate that a lot. It's also like, Tyrese, how are you going to be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in us? And then 2.5 seconds later, you got a potty mouth and you're using all of the N-words and all of the profanity. And I'm just like, 
okay, clearly I'm not going to sit up here and judge, but there's some work that needs to be done there. My final thoughts on this is that I enjoyed this interview. I wind up watching it in sections. Like I watched the first half one day and then watched the other half the other day, but I'm enjoying all of the interviews that Shannon Sharp are going for. Like the one that I did on Amanda Seals, I did a review on that. I'm going to link it up here so y'all can watch it. That's probably one of the top performing videos on my channel to date, period. <laughs> um, and I broke that thing down and that was probably the first time that I really, really paid attention to Shannon Sharp. I'm not into sports, so I'm I'm not into that world. I had to ask my sister, like, who is this dude? <laughs> and she was like, oh, he's an athlete. He was, you know, this. and I said, oh, okay. But since then, I was able to track and watch a lot more of his podcasts and his interviews. And I really love them. Of course, the one with Cat Williams and all of those things as well. So I appreciate what he's doing. I appreciate his platform and giving people the rawness and the realness to say what they want to say. I love that people are coming on and speaking their truths and not fluffing anything and just being able to be themselves. So this has been a really dope thing. I really think that Tyrese has grown a lot. I think that there are some things that he still needs to unpack emotionally really unpacking from his divorce and how that impacted him. He talked a lot about how he's not, you know, experiencing anything negative or whatever, but I do think if he hasn't been in therapy already, which I got a feeling that he is because I think he mentioned it. There's some work that needs to be done there. I think he's currently in another relationship with someone else and I'm wondering how all of the unhealed areas and the wounds that he's still working through from his marriage is impacting that relationship. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate you for sticking around to the end to watch this video. And I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.